Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. It's amazing. We don't even have to practice that anymore. It just happens. That was the first take, people. So I'm proud of y'all. Yeah. I mean, for you, sometimes it takes two to three. I don't, okay, I'm proud of me. Okay. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, we're starting off the drop podcast. So we split these podcasts up into two parts. We have one where we have this rambling part where we talk about running, our running, stuff that's going on in our lives. And we have a separate podcast where we interview certain people. This past week it was celebrities, Anders Home, who is from Workaholics. Great listen. If you haven't, go back and check that one out. And this week, Meg, who do we have coming up? Uh, Jeremy Bresnan? Yeah, you got it. Okay. From, CLA. from CLA. And you know, a lot of people don't say CLA correctly. They're CLE, all this stuff. It's a tough one, but if you see one of those hats that you love, that's a CLA hat. I was going to say, are we saying it right? Because for so long we were saying no, Martin. No, I know for a fact, because I very first time I interviewed him on Instagram, uh-huh. it was C, he's like CLA. I treat the uh, I as an H. I don't even know if there's languages that do that, but I still do, I do Chile. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I also enjoy Sounds eating chile during football games. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, maybe we need to get you to do your recipe. Again. We get a hat. Recipe <laughs> corner with we, Thomas. Yeah. We need a hat <laughs> with with uh, a chili hat. Anyway, this week you're tuned into our rambling, as you can see, and we're going to get on with it. But uh, you know what? I woke up feeling like I drank last night. Have you ever done that where you did not drink and you wake up and you're like, <laughs> yeah. what did I do last night? I feel like that's like most of my mornings. <laughs> like, I'm Ugh. like, why Why do I even stop drinking? Because I still feel the same. Last This morning I woke up and, uh, you know, as I'm walking to the bathroom, I was like, how many drinks did I have last night? I was like, I didn't drink at all. Mm. I don't know what's happening. Maybe Meg slipped you some roofies. I think I was sleeping so solidly. You are taking a lot of CBD these days. I know. <laughs> Dude, actually, CBD does give me, like, headaches. Hangover? It gives me headaches when I, um, like, when much? I take it, I think. That's so yeah. weird. I don't know. I've never heard that. Yeah. Maybe too much. I don't know. I, I think I was just. Bottle. I feel like. <laughs> the the la- tincture straight to the face. Yeah. I've been sleeping so well the last couple of days that I think it was just like a sleep hangover. Like I was so dead. Oh, I hate you, man. Except for uh, Ralphie. Uh, he's coming up on the bed and he smells like corn chips right now. I'm going to give him a bath tonight. <laughs> That's not the worst thing. <laughs> That's what I told Megan. <laughs> I'm like, keep that smell around, dude. It smells better than a dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Megan, did I not say this morning it smells like corn chips and you're like, That's gross. I'm said, I said, somebody would probably like it. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the Frito chili corn chips, are the that kind of ties in on both of our things oh. so far. That's the best flavor. Okay. Are you a person that wipes his fingers or licks his fingers? Uh, like during the eating experience of like if you're going through a bag. Sure. Uh, yeah, lick lick those fingers, man. And when you're done, that's waste, do you clean up like, waste a, of like a little raccoon <laughs> licking your hands? No, when I'm done, I just go to the sink and wash my hands. Okay. All right. Or do Such I? Such a reasonable answer. I don't want to leave any evidence around that I was in <laughs> someone's house eating all their <laughs> Frito chips. Yeah, one of the reasons I have been sleeping so well, Megan. There's the tie-in. Is the Lagoon Pillows. <laughs> Which is one our sponsor for this week. Yeah, so our sponsor this week is Lagoon Pillows. We actually reviewed them, I think, almost a year ago now. Yeah. Um, and we've been using them ever since, and I, we love them. You do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm an otter. So they have different names and cute animal names for so their pillows. So here's what happens. If you deal? go to lagoonpillows.com uh, or lagoonsleep.com, they have this pillow quiz where you just fill out like your sleep preferences. Like, do you sleep on your side, on your back? Uh, do you sleep hot? Whatever. And then they send you, here's the best pillow for you. Okay. And I never know. Whenever I read those, I never know. I can't remember because I'm sleeping. I, yeah, I feel like you remember when everybody posts a picture, it's like your name is a Viking. It's one of those yeah. quizzes, but you end up with a pillow. Oh, mm-hmm. but I, and they don't steal all your like the information. Buzzfeed, the BuzzFeed yeah. quizzes. I feel like I'm in bad. between the side and on my stomach. Definitely not. Don't sleep on my back. I, I do. I do side. I'm just, that was just an example. I don't remember the question. Oh, okay. You know, it's the biggest baloney <laughs> though. They're always saying like, you should be sleeping on your back. Do they always say that? That's, they're like, the best way to sleep is on your back. Who says this? What is this, like, (laughs) Google it. I feel like that's something you do in, like, BC, like, the time before that, when you just had rocks to sleep on. If I'm, like, panicking in the middle of the night, you know, when the night terrors come, I will lay on my back, fold my arms over my chest like I'm going a sarcophagus. Oh, really? Mommy mommy style. Yeah, and then I do my breathing, 
And then I, cause here's what I know. I'll start to drift off. <laughs> yeah, I, holy crap. You go through trauma at night. You know, like I, I'm exaggerating, but like, you know, when you start thinking about stuff and your mind goes on the spin. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll do, I'll do a little meditation. Yeah, maybe I should try that. And then what happens is as soon as I curl over on my side, I know that I'm ready for sleep because it's so uncomfortable to sleep on your back. It's yeah. almost like relaxing to kick to the side. Yeah. And people do that on nails too, which is even more crazy to think about. Yeah. Do they just do that? Do they do that as for fun or for just to, to impress people? I'm going to guess it's for impressing people. I didn't know if it was like something that. Because like it hasn't really you... caught on. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> like people have been like, trying. Yeah. I mean, so, I've done it. If the nails are close enough, it's not so bad. Yeah. It's when they're far apart that it's off. Awesome. Oh, that's probably true. Yeah, it's just just points. Huh. Okay, so. Lagoon, so lagoon you you've enjoyed them i haven't tried it yet i'm stoked to try it because we have some here i mean uh, yeah i got the fox thomas got the otter brandon got the meerkat he was a, a wild card do they have a raccoon option uh i don't think that mm. is one no it's a shame. Yeah. but there is one filled with pigeon feathers oh that's actually a good use for pigeon fit is that true no that's oh. untrue <laughs> it's very you should untrue. Do start doing that <laughs> get rid of pigeons all um, right so we'll i do the, think we're also going to do a slow motion pillow fight uh, that you'll be able to see on you keep saying on this, the ground. I have no, I want no part of it. We're doing it. We're doing it today. Then you're the one that we slap in the face with a pillow. Yeah, I, I think each one of us gets one hit to I the face. I think it's just you. No, I'm not going to show up to the Boston Marathon the, with a broken nose, dude. It's <laughs> I mean, I'll get you from the side. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. I'm, I'm All right, <laughs> we're anyway. Doing it. Um, you can go to lagoonsleep.com/slash/believe and you can get 15 percent off. So go to that, take the little quiz, find out what you are, and get a pillow. Get your okay. pillow on. All right, so we're moving on from sleep. I we guess. should talk about I, running. I will say my sleep, not to beat a dead horse. Are you even allowed to say that? I feel like do people still. <laughs> well, there is a contingency of the population that feels that animal cruelty. To but, it's, an, but it's dead. It's like yeah, I didn't but do anything that for the it, to precede being <laughs> being dead makes it even worse because they can't consent. Uh, it's like say a, the horse was into beatings. I, do people actually say that, or are you just making this up? Thomas is making this oh, up. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, I, that's, I wouldn't be surprised if someone actually I said I like that. that you're believing what he's saying today, though. Yeah. Yes. You must get consent from the dead horse or the so, horse's family. By the way, the quick Google search says you should not sleep on your back. You should sleep on your side with pillows in between your knees. <laughs> <laughs> I do that Wait, for Wait, what kind of pillows? <laughs> I, don't know. I actually did that for a part of my life, so maybe I should bring that back. What the pillows between your knees? Yeah. Did you have? Weird. Did you have one of those birthing pillows, like the one that's real long? <laughs> yeah. That the women sleep with when they're pregnant. Yeah. Have I, you heard I, of this? They're called body pillows. Dude, I Everyone's did. Everyone's heard that of that. Is exactly what I had. You did? Yeah. Did it not get hot? Um, I this is when I slept in the basement, so it was pretty cold down there. Wh where is this basement? I wasn't punished or anything. It was like <laughs> a nice bedroom. Where Where was this basement? I, when I was like when I was in high school. Okay. I don't know. You were banished to the basement. It was great because it was one of those. There's no windows. You time lost. So like a Greg Brady den. Yeah, but there was there's literally no windows, so you could just do one night. I got I, like I was not sober, um, and I had to pee so bad, and I couldn't find my way out of my bedroom because oh, no. it was just so, so dark. dark, and I was just. So what'd you do? I finally did, but <laughs> I, I was like freaking <laughs> I out. I thought that was gonna end. I'll over. never forget that. That was one of the worst feelings you could have is just being lost in your bedroom no i did i woke up after a party at a house i didn't know and i couldn't figure out how to get out yeah that seems worse and so oh yeah. so i just kicked out a screen in one of their windows i mean that's, went, went out the window that and, counts as an exit and left yeah yeah so uh wait i don't even know what we were talking about you want uh, you started talking about something and then i brought oh i don't sleep think by accident. yeah i don't think i'm back to my I still feel like I'm off from Tokyo. See, I feel like today is the first day where I'm like, I'm back. Okay. Maybe it took, there's it light took at the two end of the weeks. Okay. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I, I feel like I get still am getting tired, like really tired, like 7 p.m. Well, that's is, me every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think what, it's not Tokyo. It's, it's called aging. <laughs> no, but. Like, do you feel it, like getting to the happy hours, like at three o'clock and starting dinner <laughs> at four? Uh, no. <laughs> that's my dream. <laughs> Wow, That's, we are on different life timelines. 
That's amazing. Megan's like a vampire with daylight savings. She's like, <laughs> the light. <laughs> Stocking up on garlic and <laughs> crucifixes. But, um, yeah, I th- and my running is just, I hate it. I hate everything about it. I f- my legs feel so dead. Like, it sucks. Yeah, you have residual, I think, after a marathon. There's just dead legness. Okay, wait, do you have a, the Adidas Primex strung? I No. I should. I wait. Guess what I ran in today? I don't know. Which is part of the reason. The Ultra Boost Light. Oh, that's a weird one to run in. Yeah, but I was like, I want to know. I never really actually ran in the Ultra Boost. So I don't I was, hate it. Like, people are like, oh, it's not a running shoe. Yeah, they said it's more that. for like a gym shoe. The Ultra Boost Light? Yeah. The, yeah, it probably is. I mean, they still put it under running. Sure, yeah. So I was like, I don't I, hate it. I was like, I, I want to try this. Did you run in the Ultra Boost Light? Yeah, I mean, not like I didn't do like mileage, but I I ran it to see what it feel felt like. What the, my problem with the um, geometry with the midsole, it's ten millimeter drop, but it feels to me like much more than that. Yeah, it's also the loudest shoe I've ever run in. Dude, Whoa. it's so loud. What was the one it's I was like running the, the other day? Like that the was so oh, the Pegasus on acid. No, you, oh, the tempo next percent was loud, but also so's the Metaspeed Sky. Wait, why is the Ultra Boost so loud? I think because it has that plastic, like, it well, like kind of like TPU rails or whatever. Uh, it and also yeah. has the hollow part. The hollow part is just. Like, I think that acts like a drum. Yeah, it does. I had so many people just looking at me as as I was running down the <laughs> they street. They like heard you coming. They're like, "What's oh yeah?" And, me. and I'd say it's. I still say it's not the worst year. I even like the. It's old, not running in the old Ultra Boost. I, I didn't hate it. They're comfortable, but they are heavy. But I know we were kind of like mediocre on the Pegasus, just like, uh, and then I ran in this and I'm like, I would love we're, to be running the Pegasus, Pegasus right, right now. now. Wow. Yeah. I don't know, but it was just, I just point felt, counterpoint. Yeah. I just felt terrible, but I don't know. It's like, I think it'll come around. Will it come around? It'll yeah. Come around. Okay. <laughs> you always have cycles. Well, I was asking if you had that Adidas, uh, Primax strung because I was my legs were feeling dead and I was like I know I have shoes to review but I just I love running and I want to enjoy it so I put those on yesterday and I was like shoes freaking so much fun like it's just fun to run in but the pro- I disagree with you on one case I like this shoe I d- really like it a lot but I wore it for my mileage on Saturday and I had one of those crummy runs like I, I don't know if I have allergies or what I couldn't stop coughing it was that coughing thing again oh and so I had to cut my uh, run short. So I was supposed to do 18. I only did 11 on Saturday because I just, like, at one point I was running with Jarrett and I had to stop and I, like, I was coughing so hard I almost threw up. Damn, dude. Yeah. But as soon as I get, I, as soon as I go inside or, or do something like that, I'm fine. So I think it's, I think it's pollen. That could be. Yeah. And I was running in the park because I was trying to get elevation miles. Yeah. So I was just doing loops in the park. Yeah. I'm sure it was all the trees and the grass and everything. Oh, here's the weird thing is that not to did you want to keep talking about your No. Okay. This is so I ran in the Pegasus for the first time and my calves were dude, they were killing me. So but here's huh. here's what happened. So I got a massage last week. Yeah. Which was the first time I've ever gotten a massage. Like a sports massage or a massage? I guess of any kind. <laughs> you know what did you get a oh, sports massage yeah it was you... a sports okay so it was like deep tissue, deep tissue like they were it was painful yeah i yeah. kind of wanted it to be more painful but i don't know it seemed like it was she was really digging in there and and then i i think my body's natural state is meant to be super tight just like the muscles are supposed to feel like they're gonna break <laughs> yeah so then I think when it was like, oh, no, 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 we're not doing this. We're not going loose muscles here. <laughs> like, it all went to come back together. So when I ran in the Pegasus, it's like, we got to tighten these calf muscles back up to where they feel like they're going to break. And <laughs> that's that's my theory. And so they hurt, they hurt so bad. Like, and they still hurt. This is a week, um, five days later. You know, it could just be sore calves from running a marathon. But they weren't sore at all. Like before that no but like okay so after tokyo yeah i've been using the may grab the last couple of days because all of a sudden like i started feeling like almost like plantar fasciitis was coming on so i 
I wrapped one. I've been foam rolling like a maniac. I've been, I wrapped, uh, I did the Meg wrap. Okay, pause for one second. Do you remember when he was making so much fun of me for wrapping my, oh, yeah. for wrapping my nah, ankles he's... at night? We're getting ready for bed last night and he's over there wrapping up his foot and I was like, look what happened yeah. now. Oh, King Tut, wrapping it up. <laughs> I don't really remember making that much fun of you. Uh -huh. Okay, anyway, it seems to work because <laughs> I did my workout this morning. My foot felt pretty good. Which, by the way, if no one's noticed, we finally put up an article on the not finally we just did it well no finally because megan was getting asked every oh, day yeah I and now i just finally. it's so nice because i can just send a link if anyone asks me anyone yeah. it should be you, you know it should be in your signature in your email <laughs> signature and it walks through the whole thing of what meg does so yeah. if you want to find out the killers and there's been some testimonials in the comments and people are using it for other things than Achilles tendonitis. Like yeah, someone I used wrote it in, they used it for shin fashions. splints. Yeah. Uh, someone had knee problems. I'm hoping no one uses it for like, I don't know, diabetes or something. <laughs> yeah. Don't Probably put it is. on your tongue. It's <laughs> external use only. Yeah. But no, I my since Tokyo, my I, I felt like plantar fasciitis was coming on. I was like, this is great. I'm get, finally getting to run Boston and I'm going to be like crippled. Have you had that before? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, I've had it bad. And that's in your foot? Yeah. So what it is, arch of your it's foot? all part. So this leg, my right leg is a crummy leg. And what I mean by that, it's always tight. So when I worked is, with Ben. Is that when, the one that's like, you run weird? Like your foot looks a little weird yeah. when you run? Oh, okay. So, but that's the one that also, when uh, Ben did the PT for me, like it's this leg. So it's, it's a chain that goes all the way from my s s lower back all the way down my leg, all the way down into my foot. Mm -hmm. So the pain just travels along that. I, I get it in different areas. Like sometimes it'll be the hamstring. Sometimes just like it's the calf. Stopping at different rest stops. And it, I'll fix the I'll fix the one that's bothering me now, and it will slide up or something. Like it just it refuses to just be okay. And uh, it's like right one now, of those balloon animals where you squeeze the one side and it just like goes to the other side. Exactly. And. That's that sucks. Yeah. So right now it's in my foot, but it's plantar fasciitis, and I can feel it all the way up to my ass. And what happens is I, I try to stretch it. I do all the stuff. I've been using the lacrosse ball mm -hmm. on it, like rubbing my foot over the lacrosse ball. I've been hitting it with the vibrating, like the there gun. Yeah, and uh, I everything. So I finally broke down, and I wrapped it the last couple <laughs> nights. Yes. <laughs> did it help i woke up this morning and i had speed work and i decided again to use a lever uh -huh. which I, i'm gonna say right now this is not a paid advertisement there's nothing i love the lever yeah and if i guess if you're listening for the first time that's a harness you put on your treadmill to make it like an anti-gravity treadmill yeah. yeah it's a it's a bungee you cord that. system you talk about it a lot so i need i need to talk to the guy because the shorts that come the basic shorts are horrendous. I got chafed in the taint so bad today. <laughs> oh man! And it also kind of cuts all the circulation around your calf or your uh, thigh muscle. You're really selling it. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, dude, I ran. Oh, I, that's what I wanted to ask you. So I started my. I used the Coros watch with the pod mm -hmm. to do the um, tracking of the the treadmill, which does a great job. Yeah, but I started it late, mm -hmm. and then when I adjusted my miles because I ran nine miles on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. It had me running a 7.30 something for the entire time. Oh, because it's it, probably like closer to 7.45. Yeah. But I can't adjust the time. I can only adjust the distance. Can you adjust the time on, on the uh, desktop? Because you can't even Strava adjust the time. Uh, the, uh, oh, the time. I, don't, I don't know about that. So it basically cut five minutes off my time. So well, it gave me an Congratulations. Well, no, I, I'd I rather like have. Super fast. Yeah, I'd rather go back and be like, okay, this is what I actually ran. Because yeah. sometimes I go back and look and I go, am I getting slower or, or not? Yeah. And I want to know what the yeah, actual think time. about that. That mental, mental game All right, I'll get right say, there. Look how fast I am. It probably should have been about 10 seconds a okay. mile slower. So in case anyone was following Thomas on Strava and was wondering <laughs> what the hell happened today. I mean, you would look at it like it's 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 two minutes faster yeah. than than most of my runs lately uh, per mile. But yeah. yeah, it was a good workout, though. That's good. Yeah, I felt really good. Nice. I was like, it, it's as bad as I felt Saturday when I had to cut my mile short was as good as I felt today when I did nine miles and it felt like nothing. See, but Stevens. I, I did take off a couple pounds with the lever. 
So like you lost a couple pounds. Well, that's what it does. Oh no, it not basically physically just, lost pounds. No. You took like PS or when you the pull thing. the bungee cord, you're you're oh, le- you, you're gotcha, giving gotcha. yourself less weight. Right, right. So I was able to hit my six forty six splits like I was jogging. Yeah, that's nice. And uh, I, that, I hate to say imagine it. Imagine what you could be as a younger man. Mm. I hate to say it. They say you know that we we and I'll get in trouble from Featherston for saying this. I think lighter is faster at a certain point. It's not. You can't say that. You literally cannot say you that. You can't say that? You can't. Then how come it's so just, easy to run when I'm isn't lighter? Isn't it in a way science, though? It's the, science, too, but, yeah. Uh, or physics, I don't know. Geometry. Did you did you talk about this on the Featherston podcast? We talk about Feel it all the time, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, I know I'm going to get in trouble, but I think if, you're, if I was lighter, if I was 10 pounds lighter, I think it's an instant PR. I don't know, because... Yeah, try I don't it. Know. I can't happens. though. That's the thing. I won't have energy to run. So That's you got to do right. it exactly. You've got to get down to that weight, not training for something, right? And then start training. Yeah, yeah. You can't use it as a way to no. I just like right now, I would kill myself if I yeah tried to lose weight while I'm doing Boston training. Yeah, it's like just stop eating. Wait, maybe don't stop eating bread. I I should probably stop eating so much bread. <laughs> mm. I think there's like a limit. This is a problem when you're like uh equal like fuel, fuel for the soul when y'all are like carbs are good i'm like well that's just a free pass for me to eat as much carbs as i want <laughs> like, but when you're running it is fine uh, yeah <laughs> right. to an extent i think there's a limit <laughs> i don't know man i i've i when you're running 80 miles a week i remember running in the past where i was feeling like crap at the end of the runs so like i was just like empty and being like i can't wait to get home and eat yeah and now, like, doing it the way that Feathers tells you to do it, I feel good the whole run. Like, I don't feel like I'm dying at the end of runs. So. Yeah, I don't know if I really. See, so yeah, that's why I think I'm good on the carbs, maybe eat too many, because I don't really, I don't think I've had that problem so I feel much. like I've never bonked ever. <laughs> well, no, you shouldn't if you're doing it right. Yeah. You're doing it right if you don't. Yeah. But there's definitely, like, too much, though, Sure, right? there's always too much. I mean, I don't think you want to stop at the Shake Shack and get, you know, a chocolate shake and that's the issue. A fried chicken sandwich. <laughs> that's the issue. Have you gone there those, and gotten those food? Those aren't carbs. That's not carbs. Wait, I Protein. thought that is. I thought sugar is carbs. It is, but you said like a fried chicken something. That's uh, just it comes fat on a it comes on a bun and it's breaded. Fat mm. and protein. What's uh what are what are French fries? Fat. fat and carbs, but mostly fat. What's is starch carbs? No, starch is starch. That's just like a goes into a black hole somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think starch gets turned into carbs. Oh. All right. Let's talk about starches on the next episode. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put that down. I need to know. I think, actually, I think the whole point is you can is cornstarch. Oh, generation, so, generation you can? Yeah. Is it or just called you can now? You can yeah, now. Yeah, just you can. Because they're like, they dropped that because that was a weird name. Yeah, generation Pepsi. Um, yeah. yeah, that is cornstarch that starch gets converted carb, to, to carbs. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I'll just keep eating those. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. Um, but, okay, real quick. And, you know, it's not going to be real quick. Yeah, what happened yesterday on your run? So, <laughs> dude, this is weird. I was, Did you run through a portal? I, I might have. Honestly, okay. it feels like an, another world happened. But it's, things started out great. So I was running through Patterson Park Annex, still dark out. And uh, there was this... I was past the dog walker or a guy walking his dog who had stopped to ask another person for a poop bag. I thought, man, that's nice to see because you could have just left it there in the dark and no one would have known. So I thought that's a good start to my day because that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Wait, were you running in circles around this guy? How did you get to the whole conversation? No, I was just like, as I was approaching, I heard him stop and ask oh, okay. another person for a bag. And I thought to myself, it's dark out. There's no one around. He could have just walked off. Unless he wanted a bag for a body uh yeah it's a tiny body but they exist <laughs> so i kept running and then I passed this a uh, lady who was listening to her earbuds and singing and it was she had a really good voice i was like oh this is nice then i passed a a sign that's chalk sign that said have a good day i'm like man this is Teeing for, for baltimore this is like yeah too much yeah things need to balance no out. gunfire went off <laughs> not yet uh so I'm, I ran to the top of Patterson Park trying to get more hills in, like you, said, like you said. Yeah. And then I love running down, I think it's, 
It's not Baltimore Street. I think it's Lombard Street. Is it the one with the gate? Like it's basically yeah. the main gate? Yeah. Okay. And I love running down that it's hill beautiful. towards downtown. The sun's coming up. It's like a great, there's never any cars on that street. And the view, it is an underrated view because you can see straight shot to like the heart of Baltimore, old yeah. city. It's so, it's so nice. And although the road's kind of busted, so it's a little dangerous. But so I was running down there and I'm like, you know what? I run this route too often. I need, I haven't seen anything, nothing weird's happened in a long time. I need to shake it up a little bit. So as I'm passing near the Perkins homes, which is yeah. the old housing project that's being it's closed, right? Yeah, it's closed, not torn down yet, but it's pretty big. It's like several blocks. Yeah. And I went down this back alley that was actually pretty clean. But I was like, oh, just run past here. And it runs behind the homes. I would never do this. Dude. Yeah, me neither. Dude. Ever. First off, I know where all the homeless people in Baltimore are living right now. Because that place is just like. You ran through an encampment? No, but you can tell because the fence is kind of has torn down. And you can tell people are living inside there. But it's real spooky because you can't see anyone. But you know. So it's like when you're, if you were in a zombie movie. You just walked into a oh, town. It where... feels exactly like a zombie, like kind of very apocalyptic because a lot of them are like kind of burned out. You could tell they started So like if you fire. stopped and you're like, oh, wow, there's $20 here. You know it's a trap and then they're going to get you and eat your brain. <laughs> they would get me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, 20, like one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I, as I'm running down there, I hear a loud explosion. Like, and it wasn't a gunshot, but it was like a boom. And... Like, what was that? And so I keep going and then I turn, like, take a right turn. And you know how you can see through the courtyard? Like, they have courtyards yeah. in the yeah. projects where you With can the, just see right, forever. Yeah. If anyone else is listening, it's exactly like it is in the wire. Just imagine that. And so I was looking down there and I, I kid you not, there was a bonfire that was like 30 feet high <laughs> and 20 feet wide. Apparently, like, all the stuff from the apart or from the projects that was like, cause like people just left, you yeah. know? And I think there was just a huge pile of it in the middle of the courtyard and somebody laid on and fire. Someone torched it. I clearly had to use an accelerant because it was a huge pile on it. It was, wasn't there when I ran past it 10 seconds earlier. And it was like Dude, golf. You have a phone on you, right? So I didn't have my phone on me. I was so mad. Wait, you were <sighs> running down that alley without a phone. Yeah, I didn't want someone to steal it. <laughs> but the photo would have been okay, amazing. Okay, wait. This so when I was running yesterday, I saw this giant that's, like smoke. That's thing. what it was. Oh, yeah. And so then, uh, and so of course I was like, oh, I'll check it out further. And let me investigate. Oh kind of ran around again, and as I was doing, it was just like another explosion. But I think it was either I think it was just like spray paint cans or just uh, like propane tanks or whatever. Not probably smaller ones. But it was out of control. And, you know, like five minutes later, the fire trucks are screaming. Oh, I was going to say, like, I don't even, why would the fire truck, they're going to tear that thing down. Like, yeah, I mean, it's still a huge fire. Like, it was literally the biggest fire I've ever seen. Ooh, uh, I like, don't know what fires you've seen, but like that that's, sounds impressive. Like, that's not a structure fire. You know okay. what I mean? I mean, maybe sometimes, you know, when they, like, when you burn a pile, a huge pile of pallets or something like that. Mm. I don't do um, that. But but it also supports my theory. This is my favorite thing to talk about if I'm drinking. Is that uh Baltimore and like the re- like inner city Baltimore and Redneck wherever, Pennsylvania, Kentucky are the exact same. <laughs> so people love huge fires, <laughs> like huge bonfires uh-huh. in the middle of who even knows, just throwing a bunch of crap together and starting a fire. Uh Riding four wheelers and Definitely. dirt bikes, shooting guns. Yeah. I, you know, because like even if I hear guns here, which isn't as that much, but I'm like, I used to hear you hear gunshots all the time growing up in the country. Um, what was the other one? I, there's like five different things that I'm like, there's wearing Carhartt, <laughs> wearing, yeah, there you go. Um, even fishing in a way. Oh, oh, like just keeping random pets. Like, because I've seen, like, videos of people walking, like, deer, baby deer in Baltimore. My favorite what? still in Japan. I've seen, have you I have seen? not seen the baby deer. I've Like, because Drew Hill has a ton of deer, yeah. you know? I've seen videos of people, like, having a baby deer just walking around. Oh, that's Which weird. is great. Like, not cool. Yeah. But it's also something that you would 
to- like somebody in the mountains would totally do. Yeah. Yeah, my friend had a pet chicken. <laughs> yeah. Well, and- people have chickens all the time now. Yeah, but, but this, it lived in the house. The, the, this oh. one, it followed them around and stuff. And the the weird thing was, it was like the gross one. Uh, like they had all these perfect chickens. Yeah. And he took the one that was like didn't have any feathers on its neck, and all that stuff. Mm. You know, oh, basically, yeah. basically looked like a vulture. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, not good. But yeah, I mean, I think people are basically the same. And like we talk about that horseshoe. It is the horseshoe. Yeah. That the the. the People that you would think are the farthest apart are probably the closest. Yeah. Probably has something to do with education as well. (laughs) Oh, for sure. No. I mean, it's like, yeah, I think it's like also just a like socioeconomic thing too. I mean, but I kind of like all those things as well, so I don't know. (laughs) Oh, shooting fireworks was the other one. Oh, Uh, yeah, but people in Baltimore love shooting fireworks. Yeah, they do. I think that these are things though that are across the board. Like if you, if I don't, Ride four wheelers and motorcycles in the city, obviously. Yeah. But if we went to a farm, they're like, hey, we got a couple bikes out there. You want to take but them I mean, out? We'd it, be like, yeah. Well, yeah, obviously. We got some fireworks to do, we want to light off. But riding them in the middle of the road are things that people do in Baltimore and like okay. in the country. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Like, there's so many things like that that you could think of. All right. It sounds like a good uh, children's illustrated book. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Put that on the. Uh, That'll yeah. be his first children's. Put book. that in the notes. Yeah. C- city, city versus country. <laughs> how we're all the same. Yeah, and I think that is true. I think people are a lot closer than they realize. Like in general, for sure. I definitely think so. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, I think it's weird. Like if you go on, like I think the biggest thing the internet exposed is how much people are are similar in little niches. So like if you're really into My Little Pony. There's a group for you. My little brony. Yeah. And <laughs> you're going to see, a, it's not going to be all, all the people in that group don't look the same. It's a wide breadth of people oh, yeah. in there. Not that I know who's in that. Dude, you went to brony con. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not that I know who's behind those ponies. But be yeah. honest, did you actually go to brony con? Before? I would love to go to brony con just to take photos. I would. Yeah, it's a shame that it moved out of Baltimore. I know. Because it, it used to be weird. You'd be running and stuff, <laughs> oh, and all of a sudden you'd I, look up. That weekend was always so bizarre. What was the other one I loved? They had another. Oda, Oda Oda Khan. Khan. That's the one I really, because those people go all out. Oh, yeah. And then I took the boys to Comic-Con because, mm-hmm. you know, they like comics and all that stuff. And I have to tell you, when I was in the convention center, though, I felt weird. I did not like, like, I didn't like the cosplay people being too close to me. Oh, yeah. Did, did they just feel like you were they imaginary, or you know how like, you're supposed to trust the tingle on the back of your neck? Yeah, some of those people were. I could see that setting the tingles off. Yeah, yeah. Trust the tingle. Yeah. yeah. So like you, you you're supposed to like you, your body has like you may not be picking up on visual or verbal clues. I'm yeah. pretty sure if I walked into that convention center, I would pick up on <laughs> visual <laughs> cues. I would have no problem there. No, oh, man. You know what was cool last week, though, to change the subject a little bit? <laughs> uh, we did the Nike uh, run with uh, the Believe Run Club and some of the other local running groups. And we went to that ministry brewing, mm. which is an old church yeah. that's been converted into a brewery. Yeah. That space is really cool. Have you been there? Uh, crazy enough, I haven't been there yet. Okay. I feel like we need to do a field trip. I don't know if they open at lunchtime or something. <gasps> Speaking of field trips. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this would be a great place to do it. They don't have lunch, but we could just get a beer and and do it. It is insane because you go in, it's massive. I mean, massive it's like inside. Old, I don't know what kind of church. It's got to be. I don't think it was a cathedral. I don't think it was a Catholic church. It, if it's not, it, if it, it would have to be Episcopal or Presbyterian. It's yeah. stained glass windows. It's the whole work. So I, don't, I, I, I would have thought it was Catholic. Yeah, I feel like they go even more out, go all out. I you gotta have to see it. Okay. It and the I have to say the beer was pretty good. Yeah, I mean it's beers too. So, but that was a good time. The Nike Run Club. Yeah. Or, Ni- no, sorry, Believe Run Club with Nike St. Patty's Day celebration. It was. It was fun. The crowd that came out was a lot of fun. Obviously, we had beer stops along the way. That made it more fun. Um, came back here, jammed out, partied. How late did you stay? I stayed till like midnight. No if you, way. If you know, 
Are you, you serious? Yeah, and if you know, first off, I hate running in the evening. <laughs> Two, I'm usually in bed by eight. Yeah, that's why it's shocking to me. Yeah. But I mean, when I went out with dinner, I was, we closed the place down too, but uh, yeah. we, you know, we were here till, I, I stayed till we closed up. Impressive. But yeah, and we ran out of beverages for people. And Did you get into the Mezcal? You know, I didn't. Okay. Uh, the only thing, someone had some Jameson and then we had beers and, you know. Yeah. There's still some Guinnesses there though, right? Yeah. Oh, you can't drink that at the end of a night. No. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I, nothing dark i would i still i i've gotten so far from like when was the last time you just had like a crispy regular beer um like uh, not last week really see yeah. <laughs> i've been we go to mob town we go to ministry we go to all these places that have like brewed beer yeah that i hadn't had like a crispy like beer and just we, like a miller light you mean we, i don't we, i think we we're in japan i got uh kieran or was it Kieran or Sapporo? Sapporo. Okay, it was Sapporo, and it was cold with that hot, you know, ramen. Yeah. And I was just like, this is the best tasting thing I've ever had. Yeah, I can't do the IPAs and all that other stuff anymore. Like, I just want, if I'm drinking a beer, it's like light, Pilsner, whatever. Yeah. What is it like going back to drinking after not drinking? Oh, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's kind of nice. It's pretty good. I mean, no, it's yeah. in that way. It's actually not. It's like it's kind of like whatever. It's, Let down. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really. I would say I don't do it um, as much as before, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. Well, good, and then you reset. Yeah, it's kind of like take it or leave it. I think that we'll be taking it Thursday night. Yeah, there. Yeah, we'll have some beers. That, we'll. By the time this comes out, it'll be last night um, that we did an on event in New York City. Yeah, we have 450 RSVPs for a Thursday night run already, which there's supposed to be some rain. So, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping those people I don't know, show it up. Might, it might and the hold weather out. and the warmth, though, it's going to be like in the 60s. Yeah, that's the nice part. Yeah. Finally. Uh, you got your own clothing, right? Mm hmm. I tried mine on. What do you think? I th their stuff's awesome. It's pretty good. They make good stuff. Yeah. I don't know if it's flattering on me, like the color, especially as white as I am right now. It's like a pale, like. Oh, um, yeah. I was looking at, I think it was the photo from the drop last week. I was like, dude, winter needs to be over. Right? Cause we were looking like. Pale. Yeah, like, what are the ice walkers or whatever from Game of Thrones? I think they are ice walkers. Yeah. It's starting to get that or, like, bluish tint to our skin. <laughs> the veins are starting to show. You yeah. can see the veins coming through. Yeah. <laughs> Looking like varicose. Dude, out. I, I hate this because it happens to me every year. I think a little bit of tan goes a long way to making me feel good about myself. Are you hitting the tanning bed? No, no. no. I, but Do those still exist? I hope I think, so. I think, I think so. By okay. the boys' house, I think there's one. Um, there's some orange people walking around, so I'm assuming. I guess they could yeah, do but spray that's, tan. Yeah, spray that's tan. All lotion but i literally go from like that summer feeling good and feeling like i look healthy mm -hmm. whatever and then by thanksgiving i start to feel like like i look dead by march now is that your skin cells are hanging off for dear yeah, life yeah and i'm just like i'm disgusting like <laughs> yeah. oh and then a little sun comes back i'm like okay yeah and then a little more and you're like all right by then, august i'm like uh. yeah <laughs> and then it's all restarts <laughs> That vitamin D hit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know. People ask me how I'm doing, and I say tired. <laughs> yeah. Is that your default now? I use, I Every year, man, February, like, every year March tricks me. February, I'm like, just get through February, and we're good. And then March just comes, just blindfolds you. I have to say, in Baltimore, March is the worst month. And people think that uh, December would be the coldest. It's not. It's usually February. And people think August would be the hottest. It's not. I think July and sometimes I September. Like, I, yeah, I feel like July is the worst. Yeah. But I think it is that it's the expectation that it's finally going to be warm. And it does get warm mm -hmm. in the day, but it's still freezing. 30 in degrees morning. in the morning. The day that you know you've worn tights for the last day is a good day. Yeah. Like when you're like, okay, we're, we're going to be 40s, 50s here on out. Yeah. And then it shoots down to 14. And you're like, what? No, I think we're out of it. I think we're good. Mm. I could happen in April. Sometimes weird stuff happens in April. I uh, think what it's like is, okay, you know when, I think 
part of the reason in Tokyo, the last couple of miles were hard was because you were like, oh, I've made it. We're at 22 miles. Uh-huh. Only four, yeah. four miles to go. Plus your GPS is off a little bit. Yeah, so it's really five, but in your head it's four. Yeah, and and then you're like, you expect to be like turning the corner and finishing soon. You're like, when's that next mile marker coming? Yeah, <laughs> and you start looking really hard up up ahead for those mile markers, and like, I feel you, like that's March. Oh yeah, you just start seeing mirages and it's water station stop signs, and it's like, how are there so many water station stop signs? But then you realize it's the same one. You've only gone point one miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did find out what I may have accident. Well, I didn't accidentally eat it, but the candies that were on the table that did we I, talk about that on this show or just feel for the soul. I think feel for the soul. But do, I, um, do you remember there was like little wrap like candies on the table? I don't really. I know that there were, but I don't remember them. I, I decided to take one during the course, which in hindsight was probably a really bad idea. Yeah, foreign country, something yeah. that it could have been a soap tablet. It could have been for washing your hands. Oh yeah, it could have been a chili pepper. Anything. So I pop one of those in my mouth. Get that. And uh, it kind of tasted like um, like a digestive, like a Tums or something like that. But it, it, it fell apart more easily. And okay. apparently I think what I had was called salty candy. <laughs> Did it taste like candy? No. Oh. It tasted like medicine almost. It's like what? Minty medicine. Like it tasted like eating dried up toothpaste. Oh, it's like what a doctor would hand out at Halloween. Like a, to, and then a and it would make your teeth glow yeah. where 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 you're not brushing properly. Do you remember those? No. Oh. That was a thing? Oh, you guys don't know about that? Oh, God. So in grade school, we'd have toothbrush day. Uh-huh. And they would <laughs> bring in these tablets. And there's these little purple tablets. You're supposed to put them in your mouth, chew them up. And then you smile and look in the mirror and it shows you where you're not brushing well. Dude, that was definitely just radium, probably. <laughs> no, you gotta look that up. But they, so you'd have purple. Did you did you turn light turn lights off and put a black light on your teeth? No, oh, that would have been even worse. You just smile into the mirror and you'd see where you're not brushing properly. I don't wait. So did they do this in class? They we did it in class. Oh this, man, this California, there was like though. kids that in who's... front of everyone. Yeah, there were some kids that had some. Gooey, oh, their lives were ruined teeth. after that. Probably that's yeah. why they had Mo- to get rid of that. No, I called tell you, a moss mouth. I'll tell you what ruins your life. <laughs> So we're lining. I had a crush on this girl. I still remember her name. I, I'm not going to say her name because past tense crush. I mean, I know her first name and last name. We're in fourth grade together. It's time to line up to go to the library, and I just I wanted to be behind her because I, you know, yeah, I wanted to be close. Yeah, you're creepy. And, <laughs> and I, I, I'm a fourth grader. I'm just kidding. And I start smelling something. I'm like, uh-huh. and so I'm like, man. Did somebody fart? Uh, like, what is this? I look down, and the back of her pants is a big grease mark. Like, no way. Yeah, she shit her pants. Oh. <laughs> Did she have a nickname after that? Uh, no. Well, that's a funny thing. Her last name was a name that was related to. Oh, so it was her destiny. <laughs> it probably was. Yeah. And they they were white jeans. Um, Man, 80s were rough. And I... Just remember, like, my crush just instantly yeah, you going can't away. Back. You can't come back from that. And, yeah, and I was like, uh, and I started slowly scooting back away from her and letting people pass in the yep. line. But, yeah. That's all you can really do at that point. Yeah, so I don't know why I brought that up. Oh, the tea thing and the so shame. There, so there are these little t- tablets called plaque exposing Tablets. I'm not doing that on camera. <laughs> we should do it. Not doing it. And they turn your mouth like pink purple where there's more plaque. Yes. Get that out of here. That's what they made us chew. That's wild. Dude, no way. It's actually a very helpful tool because it shows you where you're missing. Yeah, but maybe you don't do that in front of the class. I'll just be paranoid forever because you can't get all the spots. Yeah. I <laughs> mean, people had other problems. Like, um, I almost said her name. The, the girl that was in line, she was one of them. We had a kid that like wet his pants every day. We had the kid who wore the boots with the tough Dude, skin. Dude, what kind of school did you go to? Yeah. There's like nobody learned basic life skills. <laughs> oh, like, man. This explains a lot. It was progressive. <laughs> one, time, one time in elementary school, this was, I think, fifth grade um, or sixth grade. And someone, when I guess during, I don't know, uh, instructional period, they were watch, washing their hands, but they took off 
their watch and like put it by the sink and forgot about it and then it went missing mm. and As watches do and this is you know mystery and so the teachers instead of just kind of trying to figure out who took the watch we're like we're gonna let you guys figure it out and this is shaking my faith in humanity it's kind of like that show outlast i'll never forget it so they left the room and it was total chaos because everyone beelined for the girl in the class who was like lived in a trip like a lot of kids lived in oh trailers. so they picked the weak one a lot of kids lived in trailers but she was like the probably poorest one and like kind of dirty you know and just like i don't know she was fine she wasn't like a bad kid necessarily and it was like savage lord of the flies they dumped her desk and all its contents like on her she's sitting there hand, head in hands uh, crying yeah dude like all the boys are going through her backpack over on like the rack and like how old are you guys things. at this time 12 this is perfect lord of the flies uh, yeah. like time that's the age that's the age where you, they start getting mean that's awful and it was complete pandemonium and chaos in the in the classroom and the teachers like eventually came back in and were like like oh, what is happening and i felt so bad i was kind of just a bystander because you stole the watch you're trying to keep yeah. quiet yeah <laughs> i still have that thing um and and then uh so no i'm sorry so what happened was that this is the actual end of the story somebody put it back by the sink i th think the original story had just like someone lost you know it went missing and then like during the chaos someone slipped back and put Whoa. it like just like put it back on the counter and then that person knows misdirection that's amazing yeah so i mean that was one of those things where i'm just like yeah it, everything falls apart immediately like people aren't like kids aren't good people aren't good this well yeah 12 year olds bad. man they have no they're savages yeah they they don't have consequence so that uh, speaking of which that kid who shot the teacher in the chest that teacher was on the today show or something talking about it i didn't oh, wow. watch it but <laughs> I, like i saw I a clip of it on instagram it was like in virginia beach or something right yeah uh, was it i think so yeah i can't imagine it's like a five-year-old a six yeah. six-year-old went up to her pointed a gun at that's her. that's a situation where the parents just need to be arrested and then sh shot yeah yeah i mean yeah six-year-old with a gun it's kind of crazy oh it's super crazy. and knowing how to operate a gun yeah like how to like i didn't know how to operate a gun at that age oh a nerf gun nerf gun yeah but like a gun that had a safety yeah loading bullets yeah that's a lot of well i'm guessing it was probably probably safety wasn't a, yeah. safety wasn't on it had a full clip in it probably you literally just right but that's my like that i feel like the parents are negligent oh 100 percent. Yeah, i don't know i think it might be raised by a grandparents or something i don't know oh i like how you're like i didn't watch it but i'm i'm an expert <laughs> on it yeah like <laughs> let me yeah. dive into how it should have gone meg wait what's going on with you because i feel like we didn't actually cover running yeah I'm sorry. i mean you're blazed today um i feel shockingly good i'm also kind of riding that very thin line of like fatigue and fitness where there should be a name for that um fatigueness at any moment it could be like really bad but right now <laughs> if i okay. feel good okay. so robbie look up your strava while you're talking yeah what you don't what you want to look at is our splits on that so today i was doing 400 repeats with uh three miles at marathon pace at megan's probably pedestrian uh pace she was running splits 559 what were the what was the distance um dude overall it was 13 today but i did eight by a mile at that's like about six flat yeah 559 for a mile in the middle of a 13 mile workout Man, you can run fast right <laughs> here's the thing like <laughs> I, like, I, like i know it's like on race days race day but uh man well yeah i don't i'm wait, like wait, what do you mean race days race shockingly day? good like race day i expect you to run fast you know? yeah but i'm like when the i work out see. but that's how you got to run fast and training to run fast on race day. <laughs> that's True. the thing it's so annoying so i'll be feeling really good about my workout and it's usually her warm-up pace you know I'm, I'm like yeah i did my three miles 750 i actually i bumped it down to 744 today and <laughs> then you'll come back feel like, yeah my warm-up miles were there oh man 
So it was a mile on, and then what do you do in between there? 90 seconds. Okay. Just jogging. Jogging. Um, it was 13 total, but eight eight fast miles. Wait, are you going for Boston as like your... Yeah, she's going to throw it out. race? Yeah. Okay. And then I probably need to take a break. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's on guys. like 17 I'm actually, marathons. I'm actually excited to, after Boston, just shut things down for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you need to take some time off. I say that, and then I get to the rest period, and I'm like... Well, I, I, I do think I need... I think I need a reset a little bit. Yeah. I think we all do. But I don't know. I'm excited. Like, because I'm, I'm in a good mental space, at least. Like, I'm like... What what's your thought is just to go throw down. Now, last year you PR'd at Boston with a three forty eight, right? Yeah. Two forty eight. See another yeah. trick. Two forty eight is your Boston last year. And how mentally how did you go into the race? Uh I don't even remember now. I, I didn't really have high expectations. I mean I said I wanted to break two fifty, but I remember everyone was like, You never PR in Boston. It's such a hard hilly course and I hadn't run it since twenty fifteen, so I kind of was just like, we'll see what happens. Okay, I have no concept of this. So that when the people say hard and hilly, give me around here a comparable hilliness. Well, so for my long run, I did just loops and Patterson. What about Baltimore Marathon? Yeah. Is it that hilly? It's not. It, it can't be. It's, here's, it's not as bad because, well, one, you have crowd sport the whole time. But two, you have a lot more down mm -hmm. than up. So like the first like six miles, seven miles, right? Like it's mostly downhill. But right. that's the problem for people is that they they, they yeah they go out and they're like comfortable. But also after more. Heartbreak Hill, it's pretty much all downhill. Mm. I see. When you say that's not when I did the five k last year, running through the same area that the finish is, those that's undulating. But is it is it rolling hills like the Baltimore ten miler like on? Like rolling hills like that? Yeah. Um, and then Heartbreak Hill, is that what kind of, how big is that of a hill? At the, see, here's the it's thing. It's not how big it is where it hits. Okay, but still, like how. I think 18 is worse than 22. Okay. The hill on 18. Okay. Versus Heartbreak, which is 22. Like I, when you're talking about a hill, is it like the one in Druid Hill Park that's like real steep and like a mile long? Is that kind 18 of. 18 is like that. Okay. It's like starting at the bottom of. Yeah, Druid and going up, okay. or all right. Patterson oh, and gosh. going all the way up. But there's one of those, or two of those. All right, all right. The, when we went and spectated Jordan doing the three in three days, sub three, three days, uh -huh. 230 actually, sub 230, The we went to like mile 18 where the hill is. So what looked daunting about it to me was you come in at a long downhill, you take a hairpin turn, mm. and then it's just up. A climb. And it's it's like you're talking about where it's like the bottom of Patterson Park to the top. Druid Hill or Patterson? Patterson. Okay. So, but like that Baltimore Street, like if you're coming up, which is probably a good 75 feet of elevation, maybe yeah. over extended over like a quarter quarter mile. Yeah. It's it it seems similar to that. Okay. I actually I can that's doable. Oh, it's definitely doable. I don't hate that it's, hill, but it's like. At mile 18, yeah, it doesn't feel fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, the hills start around like 15, and that's where you get like the larger rollers. And then 18, you have the big one. And then I feel like there's one more in between there and Heartbreak that's like real big. But I don't know. All right. You'll be fine. <laughs> we'll see. Run I'm some a little loops. anxious. Run some loops and Patterson. I am going to do that. I've been running up to there. And if it makes you feel any better, I barely ran hills. Uh last okay. year and PR'd somehow so well no but you did end up doing loops and Patterson didn't you yeah I did the small loops all right so <laughs> just stick to the small loops all right well f yeah we'll I'll tell you what out. Jared and I got crushed and like I was just doing loops in that park I was doing the big loop then the little loop then the big loop then a little loop and alternating back and forth and I gotta say it was probably the pollen but it just it it drugged me over the coals Ugh. that doesn't sound that fun but might have to do that at least once. Wait, so getting back to not running stuff real quick. Uh, what movie did you guys watch this oh. weekend? <laughs> the Whale. Thomas made me sit through this disastrous <laughs> made movie. Made you? I, not made me, but he 
put it on the television right. and I was sitting there drinking a martini. <laughs> so I watched it. Did you did you watch it? Yeah. Whole, like pay attention? Whole, yeah. Yeah. I, I looked over one time. She was crying. Ooh. I it, saw grease coming out of the <laughs> joints. It was the worst. <laughs> it was the worst. It wasn't the worst. What it was, you don't like feeling things and it made you feel things. <laughs> That's untrue. I, right. Well, no, I don't want to be sad. I don't want right. to cry. Yeah. It. I. I talked to you earlier, and it's like the Joker movie. Yeah. It was very well done, very well acted, mm. impactful, but you probably don't want to see it more than once. Right. And I felt that way about the whale. It was his performance was insane. It I will say really the good. acting was amazing, but nothing happens. It is a movie about terribleness and nothing Does he just sit on the couch the whole time and watch, yeah. like, eat TV dinners? No, I, there's I more mean, to that. He tries to reconcile with his... Hate. He tries to reconcile with his daughter. He... Um, you find out why he is the way he is. The opening scene is shocking and disturbing. Oh. Like... You know how like when you saw Saving Private Ryan and they hit that beach and it's overwhelming? Yeah. And you're just like in shell shock after that? The opening scene of this, I felt was so disturbing that I it took me a little while to calm down. <laughs> I'm just like, if we're going to spend an evening of free time enjoying ourselves, I don't want to sit in front of a TV and watch something that's sad. Yeah, you want John awful. Wick. She wouldn't like John no, Wick. No, I, I want like yeah. something to make me laugh. Like I want to like have at fun. midnight like with a Anders. With uh, I tried to put on at midnight for them. It looked a little too maybe rom yeah rom com even for me more on the rom side. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So the other choice would have been what was the other movie we wanted to see? Um, oh, I wanted to, I wanted them to see the other Oscar nominated movie, which they won't see. Everything in the world coming down all at once. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to see that actually. You would enjoy it. I think so. I think the more I think about that movie, the more I, I think of it as less of a sci fi time bending thing, is more just the internal conflict this woman's having and how it's playing out in her mind. Yeah. So that's, uh, man. But it, overall, The Whale is not a fail. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is okay. I mean, I Megan watch it. Megan wouldn't want to watch it, but fail, fail. as far as acting, <laughs> acting and, great, yeah. and a performance, okay. It, it, I can't think of. I will go it, back to. There's a reason he won an Oscar for acting, and the movie didn't win. True. I mean, Encino Man was pretty good. It's right up there. Okay, it's right up yeah. there. And uh, George of the Jungle. I think everyone knew when he played a caveman that he was going to someday win an Oscar. <laughs> well, that and. Uh, it, I, well, I mean, he was really good. The movie that I thought was really good was the one about um, the anti-Semitism in the boarding school where he it was like a, a drama. I forget the name of it. Somebody write in, tell us the name. By the time we're done, we'll probably Google it. But he was that was like you could see his acting chops. Um, when, when did that movie come out? 89. Oh, wow. Maybe, maybe... 90. School ties. School ties. That that was pretty good. That was a oh. good sign of his acting. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Matt Damon and Chris O'Donnell were in that movie. They that's were, a, like a oh Ben Affleck is in it too. They were the DX. Dude, that's like a <laughs> that's a crazy cast. Yeah, it was a it's a good movie. Wow. Yeah, uh, Damon is the Matt Damon's the antagonist. Oh, I do remember this movie. I never actually saw it, though. You should see it. It's okay. good. Yeah. Brendan Fraser is brought on because he's really good at football. Okay. And But, you know, the people that are going to the uh, boarding school are all wow. Christian. But I will say Matt Damon, he's one of those guys that I feel like he plays a really good, bad, like, under-the-radar bad dude, but also, like, a hero like he's a good, good yeah, guy. He can, he's got... Uh, Good range. A breath, yeah, yeah, range. Hey, but do you remember that other movie with the guy that's dead now? That was also a school one and oh. hoo ha, son of a woman. Oh, I thought you meant Dead Poet Society. That, but, that one's no. good too. Uh, but the hoo ha one, yeah, Robert. Uh, I mean Al Pacino. Yeah, but son of a woman. Yeah. That's it. Uh, who's the guy that died shortly after? Um, really good actor, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 
he's the bad guy in that one. He, oh, he's a good. And he was good. Like Matt Damon and him, you could have just switched those yeah. two roles up. Right. But yeah, he was really good in that. Yeah, he's a good, one of those good bad guys. You know Boxing who I think he would have been good for? If you were going to film, like, do a movie about Trump, I think Philip Seymour Hoffman could play oh, he would, Trump really Yeah, that well. would work pretty well, right? I think. Man, that sucks. Yeah. Right after the uh, Park City, what was the film festival they have out there? Oh, the um, Sundance? Sundance, yeah. Yeah. I was there right after he was there, and then he passed away. Really? Yeah, like at the the week that he, they were all there for Were that. you implicated in the... I was. Okay. Because, you know, I had my bag of goodies. Yeah. Like of gels, <laughs> yeah, of, Dude, of Morton's. I'm Martins. surprised we don't Morton's. you don't ever get stopped with those. I, I mean, how many times though we get questioned all the time? Like, hey, can you bring your powders like scratch and stuff? Because a lot of people put them in Ziploc bags. I do. I'm like, yeah, the cocaine sniffing dogs are not going to be like, uh oh, scratch. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when I was running past that fire or whatever, I was like. I'm probably the number one suspect in this because I look like a freaking Antifa member with a blacked out like yeah. <laughs> running clothing and a bean like black beanie and yeah. a face uh ski you know like a neck warmer. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. The best song about arson is Nine Thousand Foot Jesus. Does the um I like the fires while the city sleeps. Uh what's that one by Bloodhound Gang? It's not as good as this one. <laughs> Song they have a song called that. It uh, while well, the city oh the city sleeps city sleeps yeah you are right it says that was featured in the album which explored the mind of a serial arsonist oh Don't no me. I know this I can see wait it says the song sparked controversy in Baltimore yeah because they, it they, was they, about people were burning the um, uh, vacant homes really yeah I mean if you listen to the lyrics you have some deep knowledge that's <laughs> I can give you the lyrics of of the song I can sing the whole song. And it's it's got it was it's a great song as far as setting the mood. Wow. Okay. So, did you? I'm pretty sure you definitely set some stuff on fire, but we'll just keep that out of here. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Oh, the music, an old gasoline can. The music video was directed by Spike Jones. Yeah. Wow. It's it. You not I haven't heard the song. I probably have. Robbie, but, you got to put this on your on your playlist. Okay. Just to listen to it, the lyrics alone are some of the it's it's just nice clean rhyme but everything is okay yeah man that's i with an old gasoline can a match in my hand i reach for the latch and turn this night yeah i mean it's just insane <laughs> it's so good i don't even know what's happening okay anymore. why don't we talk about this uh new balance propel shoe all right. You're not going to light any fires with it, though. <laughs> um, anyway, not. this was kind of a surprise, right, Meg? Uh, it was. I didn't realize all these changes were happening. Okay, let's give a brief overview of the shoe. Should we start with the most impressive feature? Sure. Price. Yeah, so the Propel V4 um, is $110. Uh, that's, like, cheaper than anything. Right now, yeah. I mean, I, I think isn't even the Trey Road shoe now like 120? Yeah. All right. So this 110 has the same fuel cell foam that the SC Trainer has. Does it really? It though? does. Feel the feel the foam. You can tell it's the same foam. It's definitely the same foam. And <coughs> sorry. And I also have got an insider to tell me it's the exact same foam. Okay. And it has a TPU plate instead of a carbon plate has tons of rubber on the outsole. Well, the Propel never used to have a plate right. at all. So it's basically like a new shoe. Yeah. It's it's the baby SC trainer. Yeah. I don't understand how it's $110 if it has all this stuff. Yeah. Well, the upper, the upper is where you can see they save some money. Have you run in this shoe yet? No. Because I had some heel slippage that was reminiscent of the... Uh, Invincible. Invincible 3. So I mentioned. I have see not run it. I gotta that. tell you, I think that when you put a plate in a shoe, a full length plate, you're gonna the shoe isn't gonna bend with right. your foot as much. You're gonna have a little bit of heel slippage. I didn't have a problem with it, uh, and then I told Megan to use the the lace lock trick. To which I said, I will not. 
Why but, don't the but, brands fix their shoes? But why don't you just go to the top eyelid? I don't want to do that. <laughs> See, that's not I the can't. brand. That's Megan. God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> Boom. There you go. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of <laughs> shoes that I don't have to do that with. But this one you do. <laughs> I mean, that is what it's there for. Okay. Yeah. All right, people. <laughs> yeah. I would say, I don't know if you could say there's a significant amount of heel slippage if you don't take advantage of all, all right well the... i'll put it in the top loophole and if i still have heel slip then it's on you okay i think you should i agree i, I actually, agree with that i actually think you should do the lace lockdown but why, that i won't do why don't you like why don't you want to do that like go to the top one <laughs> just lazy all right i, I meant i don't hate that he's like <laughs> I'm with you're you. gonna make me stick a lace through another hole do you kick off your shoes too well, yeah of yes, course yeah. i do are you kidding i get so so we oh, do yeah. all these knot tying things that are easy to <laughs> yeah. untie or not just tie it this way and you, they'll you can undo it yep. when it's done it's a secure knot you go look at megan's shoes every one of them has a giant like giant looks like a bumblebee yeah. stuck to the front of it a just a knot a rat's nest of I ain't bumblebees got, I ain't got yeah. time to unlace those i feel uh, slip them off i like know exactly what you're saying fourth graders hair <laughs> it's all knotted in fact, up when i almost want to give a negative reviews to shoes that you can't kick off agree I, these are too tight there's yeah. no room for me to slip my oh, foot in I, you guys <laughs> i hate you both <laughs> <laughs> I really do. It takes five <laughs> seconds to untie it. Not even five seconds. Just to untie it. The where you can see is maybe a little money savings is the upper. It is breathable mesh. It's a nice technical mesh, but it's not the most luxurious looking, I would say. And it is like one ply. There's no gusset on the tongue. The uh, the lace. I mean, it's $110. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's the other thing that I think we're not even breaching on. Look how much rubber's on the bottom of this sucker, bud. Yeah, that's wild. So between, you know, the SE trainer fuel cell holds up pretty well as far as the foam life. Uh huh. Throw on all this rubber, plastic plate. It's a little bit he on the heavy side, but it's not. It is. Crazy. It doesn't feel heavy, okay. weirdly. It, do it does not feel heavy. Yeah. I think there's a couple things working for it. I think the actual, the rocker shape. This is on a new last, by the way, which you also see the 1080 on oh. as well. Okay. Which is more rockered, and I think your toe off is going to feel a little better. Um, but yeah, this is this is a decent for one ten. This is probably my favorite budget oh, for daily sure. trainer. Yeah, I think unless something crazy Ooh. comes along this year, this might be budget trainer of the year. Yeah, I th and I do think like if you were a high school kid or somebody who's like trying to you know really keep it on the lean. And that's a high school kid because they got so much power in their legs anyway. That with this plastic TPU plate, this foam, they could probably do anything they want in this shoe, like from daily miles to to racing. Gotcha. Nice for we, for us older guys. You might want that carbon plate and a little less weight. Yeah, we just reviewed the Brooks Rebel Six, which is also one of those budget shoes. It's a hundred bucks still. I always loved that shoe. And um, our high, speaking of kids, some of our high school reviewers reviewed that shoe, and uh, I think they liked it a lot. But I feel like there's a a host of shoes that are that simple, just the foam's good enough, and the upper fits that 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 basic shoe. Yeah, and I feel like in that budget trainer, that's what you're getting is like the basic shoe. Yeah, this one I think with all this stuff. An upgrade in the foam plates, all that stuff. I feel like it it out punches the rest of the crowd. So what I'm wondering about this shoe is is the plate necessary to have that cutout underneath, and maybe that the cutout saves weight, but the plate allows you to have the cutout. Like wh like why like why isn't it just a midsole without without a plate? Well, I think when you're running it, you'll feel it. it's a little snappier. So you get the softness of the uh, okay. fuel cell foam, but that plate holds the rocker shape really well and holds the toe off. So I think that's what makes it feel lighter than it actually is. It it really rolls. I always wonder, like, do, does it when they have these cutouts like this, like the Hoka Rocket X Two has it, and obviously the SC Trainer and SC Elite. Do you think that affects the lifespan? I mean, since they're just not as much foam. 
No, I actually think this is a choice. I would guess that this is a choice to do two things. One, to show you the plate so you can see the technology. You know, we talk about hidden technology and like how the gel and ASICs is now yeah. not visible technology. I think they want you to see the plate. I mean, I, I agree. Like, look at all the way up here. There's a cutout for no reason. But I also think this ties it into the aesthetic of the SE trainer, the SE Elite. Well, I thought the whole thing was the, the energy arc, cell. and there's, like, science of why, like, <coughs> they have the cutout because, one, it saves weight, and then, two, when you land, it, like, spreads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I was just... Yeah, but I don't think this has the energy arc. Um, well, it's, the, but it's, the it's same got the same geometry. Yeah. I don't think so. It I mean, doesn't it have exactly the, the energy same. arc goes like this and then see how this is kind of winged up i don't i don't necessarily think it's an energy arc i think it's just a plate i feel like they just called a hole in the bottom of the shoe the energy arc okay but <laughs> no the, wait the, you still didn't answer my question though. energy was, arc is the plate goes like this on the sides so that when it lands the pressure it's popping you back up okay um uh, i was but i was asking the cut since it is cut out like that uh, you don't have as much midsole, obviously. There's yeah. just not there. Does that affect the durability, like lifespan of the shoe, just not having as much foam? I don't think so. I think you have foam where you need it. Like you're not landing on that part of the shoe. I guess that's true. Necessarily. All right. But, yeah. All right. Solid cool, content shoe. Cool shoe, New Balance. Cool shoe. Yeah. I Good mean, job. this is one of those ones, again. If you have somebody coming into running, they they're just starting, and you're like, oh yeah, don't waste a lot of money. Just go get the Propel right V4. They would have a good experience. Yeah. In these shoes. Question sure. is, do you like this better than the Nike Pegasus Forty? I do. I do. One hundred percent. Snap. Yeah. That's a wow. I'm I'm gonna have to run in this this week. Yeah. Yeah, you'll enjoy that way more. Okay. Yeah. Which, there's a, there, there's a bunch of shoes that I would say. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we're getting the Vaporfly, I think, this week or yeah. early next week. So yeah. that'll be exciting. I'm excited. For, I think we're all excited for that. I am. I really am kind of rooting for Nike. I haven't had like a Nike that I've been like, yes. Yeah. In a while. And I'm kind of, I'm like, come on, please be a yes. I hope that was. <laughs> but I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing kind of mixed thoughts on it. On the Vaporfly? Yeah. Just, we can't even, I don't even want to talk about it. I think yeah, let's just not, gotta go no. with a clear slate. I, I didn't hear any thoughts about it, so I... Good. But now you got that little seed in my mind. I'll, but, tell, you, I'll tell you what I am doing. I'm going to be running in the Pro, Adios Pro 3 for Boston Marathon, and if I have to stock online to get that all-white pair, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Get a, Maybe even throw up. What does that even mean, stock online? Yeah. You know, have Jared? I think he just means uh, have Jared. To have Jared website. alert me when it goes up. Is oh, it's, it's not for sale right now. No, I, they, I thought you showed me a picture. No, that's of it. a Prime X two that uh, comes in all white, the undyed. Which yeah, I would I would do that one too. But yeah, I, I think I ran in the Pro three this morning, and it felt really good. Was it long? Is it long? No, I went and I because I, I had I had actually said to Adidas to send me ten, and the next oh. one, and I wrote back. No, nah, ten and a half is perfect. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's pointy, so maybe that you're pointy, but it also I feel like it when it gets down to your size, it's different. Like I think it's like that skew. Like I'm a ten and a half from a nine isn't that far off. Like I would think that an eight and a half or or so, yeah, and a ten and a half are are about you know the the meaty spot of being close to what they sampled out, uh -huh. and then as you get farther, you probably get more weird stuff going on. Yeah. But no, the ten and a half fit fine. And I even double checked. I'm like, am I going nuts? But I only had like a little space. All right. I don't know that undyed or non dyed Audi Zero Prime X Strong is pretty pretty nice. It's oh, pretty yeah. hot, right? Yeah. yeah. Like if I was running the if I was running in the Prime X, I would consider that. I I have to I wanna I wanna take both the Pro back out and the Prime X back out. And see, and maybe maybe this weekend I'll have enough miles that I can do that, where I could stash them someplace and switch out. I mean, I will say, Adidas. I know we say Nike Trail has great colorways, which they do. They're probably the best. But Adidas, I feel like their colorways are sick. They've been banging. Like, yeah. it, even for like shoes like the Boston, which yeah. I'm not a huge fan of. I'm like, I would just buy that for a shoe. Oh, my white Bostons with the black stripes and a little hint of orange. Matter of fact, the Adidas you're wearing right now, I think, is one of the nicest, yeah. most uh, pretty. The Ultra Boost Light. Yeah, throw that up on the table so people can see it. That one, look at this color. 
It's I mean, yeah, it's, it's nice. hard to beat that. It's got a little bit of blue. You can do that with jeans. You got the black. You got the, like it, it works with anything. The black looks like the refrigerator magnets in a way that I don't know. I think we had cheap magnets growing up where you just, I know like, what you're talking about like just cut it or then, wait. Oh, yeah. No, do you remember like the letters that you put up on the fridge? Yeah. If I you sp- pried out those little oh, yeah, yeah. square magnets, it looked like that. So and but yeah, all their colorways because we just did actually when this podcast comes out, it'll be live. But I updated the best Adidas running shoes. And man, just like looking at some of their colorways that they have right now, the the green, the forest green, like aren't we'll put on the YouTube version. Man, this looks so good to me. Yeah, are you ta- you're talking about the one that like fades from green to orange? Yeah, like um, nah, that's not it. Anyways, I'll show you. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah, I think that's all right. Pretty. So awesome. let's let's start to wrap this up, Robbie. What's your long run this week? Uh, I don't know, man. My schedule is just crazy. Megan? I'm looking at my calendar. I, I see mine as daunting. Mm. Wait, what do I have to do? Oh, it's another dumpster day on Saturday. By the way, we got to get rid of those office chairs. I know this is business talk yeah. on the podcast, but... Yeah, I told Brandon he had to uh, get rid of them. Okay. Because he's the one who broke them. So, like, you, you take care of the problem. But I also have two box springs in my garage I can get rid of. Yeah, do it this weekend. So, Robbie, my prescribed run, which I'm almost afraid to say out loud, is six-mile warm-up, two times four miles at marathon pace with a one-minute jog in between, then five-mile cool-down for a total of 20 miles. Uh, You lost me. I look like that meme with Zach Alphanakis doing the numbers. (laughs) That's my favorite one. (laughs) Yeah, I love it, too. (laughs) Uh, I mean, this is really peak week for Boston. All right. This week. So yeah. if I get through this workout, I'm good? Yeah, I'm good to go. I think I was trying to do like 15. Yeah. 15 or 60. I want to do like 16, 18, 20. I know I'm not supposed go. to do it before a week, before nine days. I before. did it one time. One time I had a 21-mile run because the coach I was working with did the math wrong. <laughs> and I did like, I'm nice. like, Megan's like, that sounds like a lot. And I was like, well, that's my coach. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Five PR'd. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I had a string there for a while, but the problem is, oh, what I was trying to figure out was like we're doing the Cherry Blossom ten miler. Yeah, and I was like, how am I going to do a long run? Oh, you do five before, five after. There's twenty miles. I know, but who <laughs> wants to do that? I mean, I'll be out there. I'll do your warm up miles with you. Okay. And you can, and I'll convince you to do the cool down miles too. All right, that's good. Peer pressure. There we go. Problem solved. All right, we should probably wrap this up because yeah. I think the clock's about to go out on yeah. our SD card over here. SD. All right, well, thanks. You like uh, tapes oh, we and did, SDs? We didn't do a review. Okay, so this review is from Why This App Sucks. Um, they gave us five stars, said, The best running podcast. Loving the new format, this podcast does a great job of making you feel like you're chatting with your friends. All things running with overall funny le- life stuff mixed in. Keep it up. Also, Megan, Thomas, and Robbie seem awesome and like genuinely good people. Oh, so we're, mm. we're pulling it off. <laughs> we are good actors yeah. and actresses. I'm not going to forget. No, I think you're just supposed to say actors now. Oh, like bad actors. Covers all of them? Yeah. Across yeah. the board. Oh, it's like, wait. Do you say waiter and waitresses or just server? I Server. Yeah, I think you're. They're trying to make it just one thing. Uh, flight, flight attendants. Flight attendants. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one that I heard the other day? Oh, firefighters. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That sounds cooler, anyways. Yeah, police. <laughs> okay, those were dumb saying words. Um, <laughs> thanks everyone for listening this week. Um, that's all I got. Yeah, come out to. Wait, the- aren't we? Aren't we? Oh, yeah, I read the review. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So now. Um, yeah, lay off the CBD, dude. Mm. But the <laughs> come out to our Cherry Blossom shakeout run next yeah. Saturday if you're running the race or if you're not just in the D.C. area. Yeah, we're going to shake it. We're going to be doing that with Confuzi and A6 prior to the, the Saturday before the. You know what you can get? Cherry Blossom 10 miler. You can get a Confuzi Believe in the Run graphic shirt from oh really yeah i didn't even know they're also so it's going to be from pacers running in georgetown um it's going to be like four to five miles easy run 
And if you want to try out the Nimbus 25. Is it really going to be that long? Four to five? Yeah. Because wow. remember, it takes a while to get down to the mall. Remember that? Yeah, I would just cut it short. Plus, it's a 10-mile run. It's not like we're doing a marathon. Still. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Thomas is out. Yeah. Okay. I got shit to do. It'll just be Robbie <laughs> <Yeah>. and I. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can try out the Nimbus 25 or the Nova Blast 3. All right. Thanks for listening. I recommend trying both. All right. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mom. Bye.